But put it in perspective, this liberal government that took office in 2015, right? In 2015, before they took office, I could buy a detached bungalow in London on a 40 by 150 lot for 200 grand. That same detached bungalow now, 800, 500, 600, that all happened in the last eight years. Um, are they gonna continue? Odds are, I would suggest that they are. So there's money here to buy up these assets. So it's more, in my mind, it's more of a shift of who's owning. Welcome back to REI Hot Seat. Got a different episode for you today. I've got uh, top performing sales team. Well, no, let's get this correct. So Simeon Papa Elias, <laughs> and you have the top performing team in REC, not REC Canada, but in Royal LePage Canada. Uh, we have the highest transacting uh, yeah. team in uh, Royal LePage. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, across the country. Some years across the province, others uh, highest grossing commission team, others, yeah. but we're always, we've been a, a top one percentile, one percentile team for the last uh, 17 years. And that's so dollars of transaction. Dollars or number of transactions. Oh, wow. So, so no small feat. So Simeon knows his stuff and uh, we're gonna talk about people's fears in the market right now, the opportunities in the market right now, how people should be looking at deals in your estimation. And I figured we'd just spitball and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we definitely are a sounding board for uh, a lot of clients. We have a database of over 12,000 investors that we nurture, educate, and transact with uh, every single year, mm -hmm. uh, year in, year out. Uh, and we've, uh, we, we do a lot of commentary and provide anecdotal because of our sample size being so large. Mm -hmm. uh, we become kind of the go-to place for the media to understand if you have 10,000 investors, how are they feeling right now? What are they seeing right now? Yeah. Uh, and um, and no, no different than our conversation uh, over coffee this morning, which is why we decided to, to record this right this yeah. second, um, is the fact that fear uh, has the market in a chokehold. Yeah, um, for and, sure. And I'm talking about investors specifically because uh, end users are, are typically just confused. Um, mm -hmm. An end user, typically the profile is, I'm a school teacher, my husband's a plumber. We just don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. A simple conversation surrounding their goals and aspirations. If you're going to be in the home for 20 years, don't worry about what's going on. Right. Let's get you into yeah. a house. It's irrelevant because that's a different set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. But your audience is predominantly investors. Yeah, yeah, really investor focused. A lot of them are active investors. For sure. And you know what? I don't really hear it that much. I hear it more from Jake when he, you know, he talks about, you know, oh, I got, you know, people asking me for money these days, you know, some of his, his active investors and things like that. Um, of course, there's still people doing deals, but there's a, especially in the, um, in the like kind of newbie investor uh, area, there's a lot of like, I guess, paralysis. They're well, just not sure what 100 percent yeah well a lot of them got hurt too yeah so so I, I think what we need to understand is what's happened and where things are going mm -hmm. um savvy investors are doing deals yeah. every single day of course we're transacting every single day uh it's what we're transacting what what we're transacting and for who yeah uh so so junior and starting developers have been beaten to a pulp yeah and that's simply because the optimism and the inexperience of a junior investor didn't allow them to see what was coming. Yeah. I didn't see what was coming either. So I'm not acting ahead or th yeah. that we know, but what I do know and what I can always say is that we don't know what's coming around the corner, which, yeah. which you need as a developer. So if you're an investor playing with development mm -hmm. or looking at, changing use of any type of property. So if you're looking for value add by finding highest and best use or changing the use of any said property, that is no different than fix and flip for like yeah. the smaller one. Oh yeah, it's just a- Which is no longer level. Yeah. real estate investing. It is a business. Yeah. That is the business of changing a use and maximizing and adding yeah. value a different way. And what that does that creates a grand slam in a good market, mm -hmm. but it creates a grand bankruptcy in a turning market. Well, I mean, this is so like thinking high level, a lot of developers are not 
interested in taking on new starts right now because they don't know where prices are going to settle because they see the uncertainty in the market, right? So that's affected the number of new starts that are, that are going 100%. to happen and are happening now. With any luck, we just had the announcement that there was no interest rate change yesterday. Uh, maybe we would see some confidence return on both sides, on the buyer side and then, of course, on the developer side. Yeah, so I, I definitely agree that there is going to be a halt. I do think October 25th, which will be the next one, uh, is going to be very similar to this one. Um, yeah. What the Canada, what Canada did yesterday, what uh, the top boss of Bank of Canada, Macklin, there uh, did yesterday, is he said we're holding steady, which was widely predicted because of the damage that the yeah. Canadian economy has taken. Right. Yeah. Uh, a 1.8 percent increase uh, turned out to be a 0.2 contraction. Yeah. Uh, and that's for anybody who thinks that's not significant. Uh, I think the number is four times that, mm -hmm. and that's what they reported. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's massively significant because anecdotally, what we all see in the market, yeah. anybody from your entire audience, if they were to ask their neighbor how they're feeling right now, yeah. they're going to tell you that they're pinching pennies, yeah. paycheck to paycheck. I speak to clients every day. Mm -hmm. People are hurt. Canada's economy has contracted severely. Yeah. People are not having fun right now. Yeah. I was speaking to so many of my clients who are short-term rental investors. So many. Airbnb. Yeah. Like Their vacancy rate is 30% higher than last year, which means if, if your average, if your neighbor can't take the kids to the cottage for the weekend, yeah. there's a problem. Forget traveling. Yeah. We're talking about... They're not even going overseas. Like, I wonder, though. Like They're not even yeah. going to the cottage. That's, Why? Yeah. Because that's what's happening. Yeah. My, my optimism in being in the hospitality industry is that those who would have gone to Greece maybe will decide to go to Tobermory instead. But we'll see in practice. And I think that on our end, we'll have to really Listen, push that Certain messaging. areas have yeah. not been affected because yeah. of the location. Yeah. I'm talking overall the market. No, but I th I've, I've heard that repeatedly, yes. a lot of them. In our specific, like our camp and stuff, we're up. Like we've we've almost tripled our, our sort of glamping because side of things. Because of your price point. But that's because, partly because of our price point, but also because of our expansion. Like we're just aggressively expanding. And also pizza yeah. sales have not gone down. Yeah. But steakhouses are seeing 50% decrease. Right, yeah. So, so the expensive vacations are going to be the first to at go. At the end of the week, yeah. everybody needs a pizza to feel better and they're going to get their pizza. Yeah. Okay, because but that's twenty to forty dollars. Yeah. But are they going to treat themselves once a month to the steakhouse? The answer is no. Yeah. So those things are going to go down. The luxuries naturally do. Always get clipped yeah. first. Yeah. So what we're seeing uh, to bring it back full circle, we uh, we definitely have seen the evidence. I have seen the evidence of what these interest rate hikes were supposed to do, what they have accomplished. Yeah. And I think that the contraction of this Canadian economy, the the punishment that the Canadian citizen has endured in the last year and nine months yeah has been enough to stop the hurt so yeah. i think the inflation people are not spending money like they were yeah. which is what we need for inflation to come down mm -hmm. so the actual objective i believe has been met maybe even over oh well here's the thing here's the thing it takes one two three years to truly feel the impacts of these yes. increases because all the renewals Think about all the people that took out 2% mortgages in 18, they're coming up now. Yeah. Uh, 19, they're coming up next year. Yeah. Like those ones are the ones like we haven't even begun to see, well, we've begun, but we have not seen the full play out of, of, of these effects. And I've long thought it would be, it would be the straw that broke the camel's back because they were trying to break something, right? Just to get to slow the economy down. Yes. It appears they've done that. Now it'll be a question of, that, of that, what so they've done. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I believe they have They done hit it. it. They, they broke it. it. Uh, and I've said that repeatedly. I yeah. think they're trying to break something. And, yes. you know, maybe them signaling, hey, you know what? Now we're going to pause. You can't believe anything they say. But we can look at the data and... And, and believe that yeah. if, they, if they do it anymore, then, then we're not looking about a recession. We're talking about a depression. Yeah. So I, I don't believe Canada, yeah. the economy, our trade, our dollar can take any more. Our dollar has yeah. obviously... So for, the, for those who don't understand macroeconomics, not that I'm a professor of it by any means, but I understand the direct correlation of inflation, bringing it down, but that also brings mm -hmm. our dollar down. Um, they can only take that hit for so yeah. long. So when our inflationary economy comes down, our dollar comes down with it mm -hmm. and our trades are being 
destroyed as a result of it. So yeah. when a Canadian farmer is selling grain and the US dollar is at a buck fifty five or mm -hmm. or sorry, a dollar thirty and the euro was just in Greece on vacation, uh, is it a dollar fifty five, mm -hmm. we're in trouble. Well, the, the big getting... thing, it makes it hard for Canadians to buy anything from out of country. Correct. I mean, if you're selling to the Americans, I guess it's cheaper for them. <laughs> Maybe they'd be inclined to want to wanna buy from you. We've always been in that that lower place, right? Our dollar is always worth 20% less than the U.S. But, like 30, but 30 cents over yeah. the last year is significant. Yeah, the change, the change uh, matters. I mean, for me, I'm like just selling some stuff. I'm kind of looking at it in the States. And maybe a time to bring some money back yeah. because uh, getting a pretty good exchange rate. But... Um, but that all comes back to real estate yeah. and, and it comes back to psychology and consumer confidence is what drives everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I've talked a, a lot about doom and gloom, which mm -hmm. I never do yeah. um, because I don't believe in it. So I don't, I don't feel it. doom and gloom. I really don't. Uh, I, I, I have felt uh, yeah. the psychology being down and in a very yeah. bad place. But what I do know, because I've, I've personally lived through a few of these cycles now uh, in yeah. my practice. Yeah. This is the signal of the turnaround. Okay. Um, so when people reach out to me for advice and say, do you think there's going to be any more ups or any more downs? I'm not the guy to say, no, I don't think so. I think you should buy real estate in yeah. because I'm a broker. I tell them, I believe we have hit a specific part of the road. Yeah. I believe that real estate in three years from now is going to be worth 10 to 20% more. Yeah. Based on an educated opinion mm -hmm. of this, this, and this. Yeah. And I explain why. I tell them what data I use to make my recommendation. I don't just pull something out of thin air. I yeah. understand the economics of immigration, of migration. We're losing yeah. Ontarians to Calgary and to Halifax right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're gaining people from all over the yeah, world. Yeah, they're all coming. Planning. Ontario's their first stop. No doubt about it. Yeah. So there's that. There's the fact that you mentioned a second ago, which was most people don't see the housing starts have slowed down mm -hmm. to a point that's alarming. Oh, the supply and demand issue is so severe. So severe. It, it, that, that's why I've, I've often said, I, I don't really care what's happening here. Like you have people immigrating to Canada th that have money they made outside of Canada without tax that can afford to buy these units with no mortgage. That is a, a common thing. We're not bringing in refugees. Yeah, we're, we're bringing, bringing in, in wealthy people who can come buy up our yes. assets. Yes. So so these interest rates hurt the more of the multi-generational Canadian that earn their money here. Yes. <laughs> They're not hurting the people coming into the country with cash. Our liberal government yeah. is not protectionist of Canadian interests. They're, no, they're no. protectionist of their economy to keep moving yeah. because they've made so many mistakes. The yeah. liberal government, and I say this yeah. not because I don't like liberals. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't care. If, if it was a conservative government that did it, I would say the same thing. Right. I personally identify as a conservative in this country, mm -hmm. I, but I believe what the liberal government has done was the most damage they have ever done. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty insane. I, politics in general can be a bit of a dog and pony show, but at the same time, like, it's insane what they've done. It's so nonsensical, so irresponsible that all I can do is laugh at it. So, so it, but if we're talking about, so as a broker talking real estate with, yeah. with, with you being one of a, a fantastic podcast that we're talking about housing. Mm -hmm. Housing is safe, housing yeah. is great, and housing will continue to grow yeah. as a result of, of the, the actions and mistakes our government exactly. has made at the expense, whether it's at the expense of Canadians or not. What yeah. I'm saying is it is at the expense of Canadians. Oh, 100% it is. So, but, so, But put it in perspective, this liberal government that took office in 2015, right? In 2015, before they took office, I could buy a detached bungalow in London on a 40 by 150 lot for 200 grand. That same detached bungalow now, 800, 500, 600, that all happened in the last eight years. Um, are they gonna continue? Odds are, I would suggest that they are. So there's money here to buy up these assets. So it's more, in my mind, it's more of a shift of who's owning. So is- So, so, so let, let's are you clear getting that there? up more, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so somebody's winning, somebody's losing. Yeah. So I can say that this liberal government, yeah. so this is why, I don't want to talk politics for the sake of politics. Me this <laughs> liberal government has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I personally have profited. Yeah. I am uh, a patient. I believe I'm an educated real estate investor. Mm -hmm. As a broker, I'm experienced. I know how to identify opportunity. Yeah. This past eight years of this government, I have benefited yeah. from. 
my clients in the hundreds have benefited from. Yeah. When we're talking about at the expense of Canadians, mm -hmm. my daughter. Yeah. It's at her expense. Yeah. If my daughter wasn't my daughter, if I didn't buy real estate, yeah, yeah, the opportunity and the chance of her getting oh, into housing way is different. slim to none. Yeah. Based on Canadian average salaries, yeah. the economy doing what it does and where it's projected to go, the yeah. competition by bringing in a million immigrants a year. Yeah. So when we say to be clear, so we don't get shaken out of context, mm -hmm. investors, savvy investors have profited. Oh, yeah. In, in massive ways due to this liberal government. Yeah. But it is at the expense of our future generations. 100%. And of Canadians proper, meaning established yeah. first, second, third generation. Well, yeah, exactly. Multi-generation. You've been here. You worked here. You tried to build a, a, a wealth for your family here. Those people are, are the victims of this yes. government. Yes. 100%. You could take advantage. And in, in, in I am huge on don't be a victim of your circumstance. That's right. Find a way to take it take it as an opportunity because you don't need to be a victim. And well, uh, the we world can all... is not fair. Is, is yeah. all we, if we can agree yeah. that the world is not fair, yeah. like fair is what you pay to get on the bus, yeah. that is all <laughs> yeah. we can... Because we can't solve, we're not here to solve the world. We can't. Yeah, you just got to make the best. If you got lemons, you make lemonade. Th that's it. Yeah. If you can make the best, so if we can help people analyze or understand the circumstances yeah. around them, yeah. I think I am satisfied with it. I'd never want to yeah. insult. I will never step on someone's head to get higher. Yeah. But have, you have to understand that what's happening in this country and what will yeah. continue to happen, even if there is a change in government, Yeah. the changes in government, even if they were to happen tomorrow, yeah. are not going to be substantial enough to change the trajectory of Canada as what Canada is today. Yeah. How do you mean by that? So not immigration policy. Yeah. So you just think that that's going to stay the same. It's going to stay because yeah. I believe they have to. They have put such a big hole together. Yeah. That without bringing in that capital every single year. Yeah. The, the country would be in a world of hurt. Imagine that because I think I, I heard a stat the other day that our GDP is roughly the same as it was in like 2018 right now. And imagine that with the immigration level, that how many more people are in the country right now and still can only maintain that. Like that just goes to show you uh, each person is like collectively spending less, even though things are way more expensive. Um, so the irresponsibility of, of the government yeah. in spending, in infrastructure, yeah. in making the right choices yeah. is what's creating that dependency on yeah. bringing in that many people to just stay afloat. Yeah. And I mean, so so my prediction for long term is it, it we turn into uh, you have an owner class, which is like, you know, five percent, 10 percent. And then you have the renter class, which is the rest. And uh, we've been on that trajectory over time. It's just the last several years, this government's tenure has sort solidified of it. solidified and accelerated it. And, and yeah, it just kind of. Yeah. Like you said, put the nail in the coffin. It, it made it very obvious. So the question is, where do you want to be in all that? Do you want to be the owner class? Decide what your strategy is. Decide how you're going to even your if work you are it. in the renter class or yeah. if you're projected to be in the renter class, what can you do to change it? Yeah, because you can always do something. Yes, that's the big thing I want to take away from this. And that's what people who watch this show and, and listen to the podcast and do all that, like you're learning strategies, you're you're doing stuff to change your situation and, and make the best of the situation, because there are things you can do. And, uh, you know, I'm big on the U.S., uh, but I know there's other stuff here. Like we, you know, Jake and I have a have this show basically but, to but, talk but, about that. We talk about the U.S. Yeah. And again. Because I don't want to confuse our conversation about politics with political opinion. Yeah. I am so objective when it comes to my business decisions. Yeah. I could care less blue or red or vice versa in the U.S. Because blue yeah. and red are vice versa. They're reversed. Yeah. They're reversed. Apparently, they changed at some point. It used to be switched into there. So, so, so yeah. all I have to say is if you go to Florida or if you go to California, it's like living in two different countries. Yeah. So inside the U.S., like when we just say, oh, I'll go to the U.S. You pick a state, you obviously. Can, you can pick anything in any circumstance you want because mm -hmm. immigration rates in different states migration yeah. rates in different states yeah. opportunity and landlording rules in different states yeah. there is and this is going back to what you said i don't care what class you're in if you want to make change and understand where the opportunities are all you have to do is educate yourself and network with like-minded individuals who are willing to try these things and you can make mm -hmm. progress and achieve any goal you want. That is yeah. still the golden promise of North America as far as I'm concerned on global. Yeah, it's why people are still coming here. That's right. Because as crappy as we might think it is, it was the Canadian dream, it was the American dream. Right. That still is alive. You can still fix your own situation. 
I was just yeah. on vacation in my motherland of Greece. Mm -hmm. And things there like look exactly the same as here. Like we're talking about a world class, Athens is a world class city. Mm -hmm. But the problems that they have when I speak to my cousins, when we speak to red tape and or the ability to create opportunities, Greece cannot hold a candle to the opportunities that exist here. Mm -hmm. And that's simply because countries that are that old and that ingrained in red tape and other politics and yeah. other things, you simply cannot move the way you can move here. Yeah. Which when you're coming from countries like China, India, um, anywhere in Africa, all these countries, we're not, they're not 150 years old. Yeah. They're thousands of years old. Yeah, yeah. With politics and class systems ingrained to the core. Yeah, that's right. There is no shifting and escaping. Yeah. They have to come here. And then they and can get out of the land, class system. And yeah. this land yeah. gives you that opportunity. And that's what I hear when I talk to, to a lot of Indian people. Like, you get out of the class system. Like, the opportunity doesn't exist there for Correct. them. Well, at least they say that to me. I don't know it, firsthand. It's fact because yeah. I'm telling you from India, mm -hmm. let's call India 100 years behind any European country from that perspective. Yeah. But because they were just on the moon. So other perspectives are 100 years ahead. Okay. But just from the class system, the politics and the, yeah. the economic opportunity. Yeah. It is, I believe it, I don't think it's rhetoric yeah. when, when, uh, when my Indian brothers and sisters tell me this is what's happening, this yeah, is yeah. why we're here. I believe it. I've heard it consistently. Yeah. Because yeah. two weeks ago, I was in Greece where my cousin looks at me in the face. He goes, Same you know idea. what you're talking about right now, the opportunity you're working on? We couldn't dream of it here. Yeah. That sucks. It does. And that, and that just makes me so happy to come home. Yeah. yeah I'm going to miss the beach. I'm going to yeah. miss the beach, but I'm happy to be right here right now. You can always say the grass is greener, that's right. uh, but at the end of the day, we do have opportunity here. And so I, that's what I love. That's a great sentiment to end on. So uh, Simeon, where do people find you? Uh, anywhere on socials. It's S Papa Elias. REC Canada uh, is uh, obviously our fulfillment center for real estate requirements. If anybody needs yeah. to analyze, look at second opinion, reach out. Um, and uh, we're working on a truckload of, technology and stuff now yeah. with brokers playbook and investors playbook but yeah simeon's a busy guy uh definitely check him out make sure you're following but him it, it, if you're not already reach out reach out to andrew he can uh you can find me for All sure right. sounds good thanks for doing this cheers my man i appreciate it